Hey, you. Drop what you're doing and mark your calendar. Saturday, January 9th at 7 p.m. Pacific Time, I'll be hosting Tom's Hit Parade's first annual State of the Channel live stream. Yes, I'll be reminiscing about the year that just ended and prognosticating about the year that just started with regard to what you may or may not be seeing on my channel in the coming year, my channel's fourth year, if you can believe it or not, I hardly can, uh, and whatever else is on my mind or on your mind. Yes, please bring your questions. I hope you can join me live. Uh, if you ask them nicely enough, I'll even maybe answer them. So yes, please join me. It'll be a lot of fun this coming Saturday, January 9th at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. I'll see you there. Greetings, one and all. Happy New Year and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Today I will be kicking off my three-part 2020 year-end spectacular-ish. And frankly, if there is any year in recent memory that I am happy to celebrate the end of, it's 2020. It's kind of like, don't let the door hit you in New Year's Eve on the way out, as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, I will be tweaking the formula for my year-end spectacular-ish uh, this time around. Normally, uh, in the first video, I, talk, I just do a little speech. I talk about my reminiscences over the past year, what the year meant to me in terms of music and other stuff. But I decided to uh, save that for my, as I just advertised, my State of the Channel live stream. That'll be coming up next weekend. I hope you'll be able to tune in for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. So yes, this time I'm just going to go straight into the lists. Uh, today I will be doing three smaller lists. In my next video I'll be doing two medium-sized lists. And in the final video, the third of three, for my year in Spectacularish, I will be doing the big one, my favorite albums of 2020. Now, coming up in a few minutes here, I'll be giving you my list of my favorite album covers of 2020, as well as the albums that most disappointed me over the past year. But before we do that, let's hop back to 2019 for a moment, shall we? It's probably something that a lot of us would like to do, I'm sure. And I'm going to give you my what's become one of my favorite year-end lists to do. Uh, I started doing it last year. I call it my second thoughts. And the premise behind it is very simple. It is the albums that were released in 2019, but that I didn't discover until 2020. So yes, uh, I can't listen to everything that comes out each year as much as I'd like to. So I invariably will miss some things. And that's what this list is for. The albums that I would have had on my favorites list last year, but I either didn't know about them or didn't take the time to listen to them until this year. So in the approximate ascending order of where they would have appeared in my favorite albums list last year, I present to you now my second thoughts for 2019. First up on my list is Norman F. Rockwell by Lana Del Rey. Yes, I had never taken the time to check out Lana Del Rey's music before, but uh, this one, what changed my mind about this one was it was on a lot of year-end lists last year, obviously. And also another thing was a very, very close friend of mine loves Jack Antonoff and everything he touches. And of course, Antonoff was very uh, heavily involved in this album. So that's what uh, convinced me to give it a listen. I, I streamed it. Uh, this was the first year that I was actually really got uh, decently into streaming. So yeah, streamed it. I found a lot of good stuff to like on it. And I eventually, as you can see, I picked up the album. So it's a very, very good and a nice introduction to Lana Del Rey. And I'm thinking about, I uh, haven't done it yet, but I'm thinking about checking out her previous discography. So yes, this would probably have been somewhere in between number 20 and number 25 on my list last year. So yeah, good stuff. Up next on my list is Cause I Love You by Lizzo. And yes, of course, I heard about her and heard about this album as soon as it dropped. What was it? The spring of 2019, I think it was. Who could escape the hype behind her? And that was one of the things, honestly, that repelled me at first was when an album or an artist gets too much hype, it turns me off. And I just, uh, you know, I, I just kind of ignore them. And it's kind of like, oh, how can any album or artist be that good to get that much attention? And another thing that I kind of was turned off by at first was the, uh, the hip-hop element in her music. I, I did uh, listen to, I think it was uh, probably on YouTube, a couple of the singles off this, and it was just a little too much hip-hop for my taste at the time that I listened to it at first. Uh, but a couple of things changed my mind, obviously, since I own the CD. Uh, I saw an interview with her on CBS Sunday Morning, I think it was last summer, summer of 2019, and she had such a, a charm and personality, a bright personality. She seemed very intelligent, very bright. And I, I just, I, I kind of, my heart went out to her. And also the fact that um, her message of empowerment is just amazing. You know, pop culture uh, glorifies the ideal and marginalizes the imperfect. And she is all about upending that, putting an end to all that. And 
that just that just won me over with her big time and I, I did kind of start to, to enjoy her songs after that I streamed them a couple more times and the thing that clinched me and that made me buy the CD was when everything locked down at first and there was the stores were not open for in-store browsing uh, Music Millennium on their Facebook page would do daily specials and this CD, brand new for $5.99, was one of the daily specials, and so that's what convinced me. I called them up right as soon as I saw that and ordered it, and I mean, for that price, for, you know, the CD brand new, how could you how could you go wrong? Especially with Lizzo. Yes, I would put this between number uh, 15 to number 20, I think, on my list. So yeah, very, very good stuff. My next second thought for 2019 is Stronger Than the Truth by Reba McIntyre. Now, I've never been a huge fan of Reba's music. Uh, the only other two CDs that I have uh, besides this one are her two-disc number ones set, as well as her duets album. So yeah, not a huge Reba fan uh, uh, as far as music is, is concerned, but I like her, uh, especially as an actor. Her 2000 sitcom was one of my favorite sitcoms of that dec decade. She's just got such a great personality and charm, and uh, she's just a likable person. So I don't know why I haven't really uh, caught to her music. Well, I guess I do know why. It's just because I haven't really gotten into country, except in the past couple of years. I've just started really digging into country. And the other thing that turned me around on this was that it, it ended up on several of my YouTube friends' greatest albums lists of its year, of 2019. So I decided I had to check it out for myself, and boy, was I was I surprised, pleasantly surprised. This is a fantastic album. One thing you turn to for country music is the stories. Their, their songs tell really great stories, and this album is top-notch when it comes to that. Uh, Cactus in a Coffee Can, uh, Storm in a Shot Glass, uh, you know, similar titles, the, the metaphors there. Great songs, as well as Know You in Oklahoma. And, uh, and the title track as well. Just a, a fantastic, great set of songs. This uh, is, uh, it's really making me want to check out what I may have been missing in her past discography. So uh, yeah, fantastic album. This would be in my, uh, between number 10 and number 15 in my list if I were to redo my 2019 albums list. So yeah, fantastic album. Even if you're not a huge fan of country, uh, I would recommend checking this album out. If you love songs that tell stories, this is a fantastic album for that. Okay, my second favorite 2019 discovery that I made in 2020 is a bit of a different one. It's a jazz album, instrumental jazz, but it is fantastic. It is by a group called The Comet Is Coming, and the album is called Trust in the Life Force of the Deep Mystery. Strange title, but this is fantastic music, and I have mentioned before how I'm not a fan of improv or freeform jazz, uh, and I'm not sure how much of this is actually composed as, as it is done on the album and how much of it is just jamming, but I love this album. It's just fantastic. Long, lingering tracks that are just... have A lot of them have just great grooves on them. Just fantastic. It's, there's a, an element of funk to a lot of these tracks, and it's just excellent. If you like, you know, funky kind of stuff that uh, that's instrumental, that uh, has a nice bass line, as well as some really, really groovy saxophone in it, there's a lot of saxophone in these tracks. I would recommend this album wholeheartedly. Uh, and yeah, this is, uh, I believe this is their first full length album. I could be wrong on that, but I am very seriously considering checking out their other stuff. But yes, The Comet Is Coming is my second favorite discovery. Uh, the album is called Trust in the Life Force of the Deep Mystery. And now my number one favorite second thought of 2019 is Pony by Orville Peck. Now this is just a great album. I talked about it in a recent playlist video the month that I discovered it. It was a few months ago. I'll, I'll point you to it here. Uh, but yeah, it's fantastic. It's, it is country primarily, although it's it's unfair to box it into the country genre. In fact, it was filed in the rock and pop at the local record store. But yeah, it's, it's got elements of rock and pop and country and folk and uh, it really harkens back to early Roy Orbison. You know, it's kind of got that 60s, deep, cavernous, echoey kind of sound to it. And his voice can be a dead ringer at times for Roy Orbison and at other times for Johnny Cash. He's just got a great, uh, a great voice and just the entire album has just got this great mood to it. I absolutely love it and I highly recommend this. Don't let the country label or the fact that he's wearing a cowboy hat on the cover scare you off at all. It is, it, it can barely be, descri be described as country, uh, even though, yes, there are cowboy boots on the back cover. But yes, I highly recommend this. Uh, Dead of Night is the song that uh, is uh, one of his, one of the singles, I believe. But yeah, and, and that just, that's the opening track and it just takes off from there. And yeah, it was playing at House of Records when I was in there one day browsing. And I loved the first song. When the second song came on, I loved that. And the next one and the next one. And uh, I walked out of the store that day with this album and I have not regretted it since. So fantastic album, Pony by Orville Peck. Check it out. 
Okay now, let's move from one of my favorite year-end lists to do to my least favorite, and that is my most disappointing albums of 2020. Now take special notice of the title of this list. To be clear, I did not hate or dislike these albums, I just didn't connect with them at all, and thus they disappointed me. Now that happens with a fair number of albums that I stream, but I limit this list to the albums that I actually purchased, since that's how much I thought I was going to enjoy them. But I felt so indifferent to them that I ended up selling them as used items to the local record store. Now fortunately this list is only four items long, and I think we can probably thank uh, the fact that there were so fewer opportunities to go record store shopping this year than in the previous year. So in no particular order, here are my most disappointing albums of 2020. First up on this list is Pick Me Up Off the Floor, the most recent effort by Nora Jones. Now to be clear, I like Nora Jones, at least her early work. Uh, her first, I believe, three albums were in my sister's CD collection that I inherited from her, and I've really, really come to enjoy those. Uh, there's just something I like about her smoky voice and her smooth delivery that I just really, really enjoy. Unfortunately, I tried t two or three times since then to get into her more recent albums, and yes, this one unfortunately did not click at all, and I'm not sure what it is about, you know, if she's changed her style, because I don't think she has. Uh, but yeah, just there was just something about the album that I just could not connect with, and I don't know if it was my fluctuating mood over the past year, and that could apply to any of the items on this list, frankly. But yeah, because considering what a weird year it was, but yeah, unfortunately, I just could not quite get into uh, Nora Jones's album, Pick Me Up Off the Floor. Okay, this next one is one that I hope doesn't get me too much hate in the comment section below, but like I said at the beginning, I did I did not hate any of these albums, I just couldn't connect with them. And this one is Bob Dylan's latest album, Rough and Rowdy Ways. Yeah, and, and I was looking forward to this one too. I really was. I, I really enjoyed that, that, what was it, 16 or 17 minute song that he did to promote the album. Uh, just unfortunately, yeah, I, I gave it several listens, repeated listens bought it on CD because I thought I was going to really enjoy it, and for some reason, yeah, I just was not able to connect with it uh, emotionally or or even just on a, you know, I like the tunes thing. And I really like a lot of Bob Dylan's uh, early work, his uh, his more famous 60s and 70s stuff. So, so yeah, just uh, it really, really disappointed me that I was disappointed in the album. So, yeah, I hate to say it, uh, maybe in the coming year uh, when I have a different frame of mind, maybe I'll be able to come back to it and hear something attractive in it that I wasn't able to hear this time, but uh, yeah. Up next on the list is Michael Fronty and Spearhead with their latest album, Work Hard and Be Nice. And uh, yes, this is another artist that I have several of their albums, three or four of their albums from the late 90s through the end of the 2000s, early 2010s, that I really, really enjoy. Just the very, very light, for the most part, feel-good stuff with a little bit of social commentary here and there. Uh, and, and this one was uh, another one that was kind of on the light-hearted, you know, thing, and it's something that I needed a lot of this year, was light-hearted music. Unfortunately, yeah, just the songs just kind of fell flat for me. I, I don't know what it was. Uh, maybe it was just not distinctive enough. You know, the songs were just not giving enough personality. You know, maybe that was what it was, was in execution. It was just trying to be a light-hearted album, maybe too much so. And that was why I was just not able to connect with it. So, yeah, hate to say it, but yeah, that one unfortunately let me down. And now the final album on this thankfully short list of disappointments for the year is The Book of Molly by Molly Music. Now, I first got into Molly Music, uh, I, he first came to my attention when he did a promotional appearance on American Idol in the 11th season, I think it was, uh, for promoting his album Molly Is. And uh, that, I loved that song that he performed there. I picked up his album. It was really, really good. I picked up the follow-up a couple years later, The Transition of Molly, and I really enjoyed that one. And this one, I knew going in that he was going in a gospel direction with this album. And I, I was, you know, I thought that, you know, I was going to be able to overlook it because I've, you know, I've, I'm trying to expand my horizons. You know, the lyrical essence of gospel and worship music is lost on me because I am not a religious person. So I was hoping that, you know, otherwise the, just the, the joy and spirit of the music otherwise would, uh, would, latch onto me and uh, I would take something away from it. But unfortunately, uh, this one just didn't do it. And another thing about this was uh, he put a little bit more of a hip-hop element into it, a little bit more of a rap element, and his previous two albums were not quite so much. And so I think that's the other thing that kind of, you know, failed to let me connect with the album. So unfortunately, yeah, those four albums just did not do anything for me, I, I'm sorry to say. And now my final list for today is just for fun. I like throwing this one in here, and I'm kind of happy because I didn't think, for a long time, I didn't think I was going to be able to do this list, just because there was not enough material to draw from that 
seemed to be worth doing the list. And I don't know if it was just because I wasn't paying much attention to album covers, or if they really were a little less than inspiring or, or eye-catching this year. And I would be surprised if that was the case having to do with the mood of 2020. I mean, everybody's mood was just a mess this year. But yes, thankfully I was able to uh, cite five album covers that I really, really enjoyed this year. And uh, as the name of this list implies, this doesn't have anything to do with the content of the album, the songs, the production, the vocals, the artists, none of that stuff. It is strictly determined by one and only factor how much I liked the cover art. Number five in my list of favorite album covers of 2020 is Tea for the Tillerman 2 by Yusuf or Cat Stevens. And I th just thought it was really, really clever how they updated the cover art uh, from, from the original release 50 years ago. I just thought it was fantastic. I mean, all of the characters are in the same positions, you'll notice, but there are nods to the 21st century in general, or perhaps to 2020 in particular. I mean, the central character there, you'll notice he's dressed in a space suit, an isolation suit, maybe as a theme for the, the pandemic, just, you know, protecting himself and from everybody else, social isolation kind of thing. And also the kids uh, that are playing in the tree, you know, in the original cover, they were playing with, you know, sticks or leaves or rocks or whatever they had there in nature. But of course, the one that's sitting up in the tree is wearing headphones now. And uh, the one who's sitting, standing at the bottom of the tree has a cell phone in their hand. So just very, very clever how they updated all that stuff. I just thought it was fun. And uh, the album wasn't bad either. But yeah, just I thought it was just a very, very clever uh, update to the original cover art. Coming in at number four is the cover of Women in Music Part 3 by Haim. Now, I just loved all of the in-jokes in the album cover. I mean, and probably most of them, if not all of them, I'm sure were directed as uh, very subtle jabs at the male-dominated music industry. It's, you know, as much as I hate to say it, it is male-dominated. I mean, even the title of the album, Women in Music, Part 3, is, you know, it's kind of a, a jab. And, of course, we have the, the customer counter that's up on, on the wall up there is reading number 69 which has uh, uh, sexual connotations, if you guys don't know uh, about that. And the, of course, the row of sausages that are hanging on the wall, that's obviously another another uh, jab, uh, I'm, I'm sure. But yes, just very, very, uh, and, and probably their grim expressions, on uh, facial expressions on the cover probably have something to do with it all as well. But uh, yeah, anything that uh, pokes fun at the patriarchy or, or, you know, makes a statement against it is, hey, it scores points in my book. So yeah, fantastic album cover and a very clever one too. My number three favorite album cover of the year is The Killers, Imploding the Mirage. Now, I probably could have ranked this one a little bit lower, strictly on the technicality that the main image of the cover is actually a pre-existing work of art. It wasn't commissioned specifically for the album. but uh, And incidentally, it is called Dance of the Wind and Storm, and it's by African-American artist Thomas Blackshear. So first of all, major points for them uh, requesting an African-American artist's work to grace the cover of their album but i just love the image it's just absolutely it's majestic it's gorgeous it's got a pastel color palette but it's kind of a darker pastel color palette and i just i just absolutely love everything about it i was kind of part of the reason i was waiting the album so much was because of the cover art i sometimes i'm just sometimes i'm like that i don't know why but yeah fantastic gorgeous album cover one of the best of the year obviously my runner-up for favorite album cover of the year is Crash Test Kid by Sammy Brew. And I wish I could give you a really good reason as to why it's my second favorite of the year. I don't have a really good reason other than the fact that I think it's probably just because of the comic book art uh, scheme of the, the album cover, the, the way they did it as a comic book illustration. I just love it. And part of the reason is on the liner notes in the LP, and it may be on the liner notes in the CD as well, you see that uh, there is a photograph of this image. And, uh, you know, so so the illustration for the cover was done off of an actual photograph of him with his hair blowing every which way. So that's just, I mean, that's just part of it. I just love, I love the scheme of it. I, I used to be way into comic books, not nearly so much anymore, but uh, yeah, it was just, it's funny, it was something different in album covers this year. I just, it was just, it had a little bit of uh, aspect of fun to it. I think that's the reason it drew me to it so much, but, and the album was really great too, but yeah. I just, uh, just a fun, a different album cover for this year. I really, really liked it. And now for my number one favorite album cover of 2020, it is Folklore by Taylor Swift. I just love it. And the funny thing about that is when I was much younger, you know, in my teens and even in my 20s, I did not care for nature photography or landscapes at all. I just didn't like it. They were completely boring to me. But now in my 
adulthood, my mature adulthood, I guess you'd say, I really, really appreciate uh, landscapes, nature photography, and that kind of thing. And so that's one thing that drew me to it. And uh, there's something about a, a woodland setting in particular that I really enjoy. And also the composition of it adds something to it. The fact that it's in black and white, and also the fact that there's a thin layer of fog that's kind of shrouding the treetops, it just it just adds to the, the folk folklore, uh, uh, you know, the scheme of the album title, Folklore. It just kind of gives it a, a fairy tale kind of um, uh, a haze over it. So I just thought it was just perfectly done. It's not the most spectacular album cover, but in my opinion, it's the one that most fits the album uh, for pretty much any release, any release that I paid attention to this year. So uh, yeah, Folklore by Taylor Swift, that walks away with the my personal award for album cover of the year. Well, that'll do it for the first three lists in my 2020 year-end spectacular-ish. Coming up in my next video, I'll be counting down my favorite Backtrack Spotlight albums of the year, as well as my favorite Bargain Bag CD finds of 2020. And don't miss my grand finale, where I will be counting down my 25 favorite albums of 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.